Rights. Well, Doug Bruce, author of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, thinks we have, and he's suing the county now for what he sees is a violation of our state constitution. New tonight at 6, News 5's Andy Cohen joins us in studio now with a closer look at his complaint and what kind of refund it could mean for the community if his challenge succeeds, Andy. Yeah, well, this suit has to do with sales taxes that were collected under the 1A Sheriff Safety Tax. The county took in about $900,000 more than it expected to back in 2013, which was the first year that the tax was collected. So now Bruce is suing, claiming that the county owes us a refund with interest. Douglas Bruce thinks El Paso County stole your money by keeping more than it promised to under the 1A Sheriff's Public Safety Sales Tax. The county just wants to keep the money that it consciously, intentionally stole. And they knew it. They knew that they had taken the money. He sued last week, claiming the county violated the taxpayer's Bill of Rights by not refunding that excess revenue collected in the first year of the new tax. Bruce said that he called the county attorney in 2014 to warn her that a refund was due. And I said, you have to put an issue on the ballot to ask to keep the money. It says so right in there, except by later voter approval. You have to ask to keep this money. And she ignored it. But his lawsuit could face a factual hurdle. The ballot question contains a clause stating that the money collected can be spent without limitation of the Tabor Amendment. A county spokesman told us in a statement the $17 million estimate in the ballot language was a best guess given the data at the time. He thinks that voters are more discerning than people give them credit for, saying, quote, they understood that they were approving a 0.23% sales tax for critical public safety needs, and they understand that if retail sales go up, there will be additional money available for that purpose, and likewise that if sales fall short, some of the promised improvements may be delayed. But Bruce points out that the state legislature set a clear example on this issue by refunding excess marijuana taxes collected after the passage of Amendment 64. You know, when the legislature agrees with me, that's news. Now, the Tabor Amendment does contain a four-year deadline for people to sue if they believe, like like Bruce does, that this uh, government is ignoring the constitutional requirement. It also charges the government a 10% interest rate on that money that wasn't refunded.